Good afternoon, Sarah. How are you? Okay, can you hear me all right? I can. Okay, good. I can't hear you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. I, it's really so great for our clients. Well, we're happy to do it. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be live streaming this on our YouTube channel, if that's okay. Sure. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not my headphones. It's the computer itself. So if it's too quiet, let me know. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you if it would be okay if I mentioned we have a client, uh, Morris Irvin, who is doing a book launch with the library on February 1st. Um, and I thought I'd mention it if if you don't have any objection. No, that's fine. Okay. I imagine you'll be sending out an announcement closer to the date. Um, but and we'll we'll send it out too. But we'd like to get the word out as much as possible. Yeah. So yeah. okay, so I will do my little score slides and then I'll let you people take over. So, Sounds good. Okay. Sandy, so. do you want me to share the screen? Oh, I need yeah, to probably I'll just, read our. Yeah, I'll just do my score slides first, and then okay. I'll stop sharing and let you take over. All right. If that's okay. Yep. We yeah, still have. Works. Because okay. when I'm done. Sandy can share her screen and do live searching. Okay. I do see the button down there, so I should be fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we still have about 10 minutes. Okay. So how's the weather where you are? We've got sort of a sleety rain 
pretty crummy. Sounds yeah. about right. Sort of a, a nice day to stay indoors and read. <laughs> Oh, if, if that's only. all, yeah. If that's all we were doing, that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that what you do at the library? Just read oh, all day? <laughs> sure, <laughs> of course. Oh, I would I'm love sure. to get paid to read. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we all? <laughs> I love your digital loan. Uh, so I download a lot of stuff from the library. Okay. Oh, yeah. I love that it returns itself. Yes. I'm very bad about oh, returning yeah. books. <laughs> Make sure, and I just download to my Kindle and, and mm -hmm. uh, enjoy reading all of your books and all your materials. So what a... What an amazing difference, you know, when I was in school, we would go to the library and make note cards uh, for mm -hmm. references and, uh, you know, you had to go to the library and sit there and write out your little note cards and now it's <laughs> so easy. And then, of course, we use typewriters and whiteout was king in those days because oh, yeah. other than retyping the whole thing, if you could just white it out and type over it, it was a big advantage. And that was a huge um, leap forward. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's so easy to write now. Uh, you know, once you get something down on the computer, you can edit to your heart's content. And now with uh, chat GPT and everything. Everyone froze. Uh, you know, what, what more do you need? Yeah, that is, um, that's a double-edged sword. We've had a lot of success with that right, yeah. and then a lot of strange encounters. We had someone um, who's a local engineer who sent us a list of articles and said, can you find the PDF for us? And we couldn't find these things anywhere. And we said, well, where did you get this list? And he said, chat GPT, it made up fake articles. Oh, I believe it. You know, that's the thing that people don't realize that you really have to check for ac accuracy because they're just pulling information from the web. Yeah. And, it has uh, no access to like databases or anything. So it knows it had a title and it had what sounded like a good, you know, journal name, but they were completely fake. And <laughs> it was like, but it was so realistic sounding that he really thought we had them. And well, we were getting upset. We're like, why can't we find these? We have all these journals, these, you know, and the names were for real people, but they didn't exist. It, like none of it made sense. But um, I have used it to write like descriptions for programs and other stuff that sounds far more eloquent than I could ever say. Well, I think it's nice to, uh, you know, run it through for grammar and spelling and stuff like that, or mm -hmm. fluency, I think is helpful. And sometimes for my clients, I'll do a draft um, business plan for their particular industry. And, and that's usually helpful. So it does have some good applications, but I think you have to be so aware of what its limitations are. And a lot of people don't take that to heart. So, but I suppose going forward, we'll learn more about how to use all those AI tools. So. Oh, I've seen some training out there, but I haven't attended any myself. Yeah, I don't do a lot with it, but I, I would like to learn more, especially when it comes to putting together slide decks and things. Uh, that would make my life a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. I never okay. thought about that. Can yeah. you do my presentation for me? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, so uh, apparently, I think it's a beautiful AI that if you give it uh, an outline and you know content, it will put it in the slide format for you. Oh, okay. I haven't tried it uh, because you have. To, I think you have to have a a paid uh, account to do uh, that. And uh, I haven't decided that I want it bad enough to pay for it. 
<laughs> Some things are just easier to do yourself. Yeah. So usually what I do when I do slides, I go through and just sort of dump everything on slides and then I go back and start editing. Um, so it takes me three or four run throughs to come down to what I want and then I have to go back and try to format it so that everything looks decent. So, so I think I'm going to go ahead and open it up and let people start coming in. I'm going to mute myself. So you don't... Okay, got it. <laughs> All right. We'll mute too for the moment. Okay, so I don't know, people may not sign in until noon, depending on if they're coming on their lunch hour or what. But it won't hurt to give them a couple early minutes. Good afternoon to those of you who are just signing on. We'll be waiting a few minutes uh, to give people adequate time to log in, and then we'll get started.
Okay, it's noon, so I think we should get started for those people who are here on their lunch hours. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Anita Kayat. I am a SCORE mentor, and we are very fortunate to have the folks from the Cleveland Public Library with us today to give a demonstration of their databases. And I think that's such a wonderful opportunity for you if you're doing research to understand how you can use these databases most effectively. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about SCORE. Uh, SCORE is the largest network of free volunteer mentors uh, in the nation. So no matter what stage your business is, we can find a mentor for you. We have over 10,000 volunteers across the United States and we're all connected via the internet. So if we don't have somebody in the Cleveland area who's able to help you, then we can reach out to those other SCORE mentors to find somebody who can. So our mission is to foster vibrant small business communities. And we do that primarily through mentoring and education. We hope that you as a small business owner will have the resources you need to be successful. So certainly if you paid attention in the last several years, Cleveland has been revitalized in the downtown area, particularly because of small businesses. And that is really driving our economy. So it's our thanks to you um, that the city is being more successful. Here are some statistics um, from our last year. Uh, we helped to start over 500 businesses and created jobs and provided other services. Note that we cover on seven counties along the lake. So in addition to Cuyahoga, we have Lake um, Diaga and Ashtabula on the east and Lorraine, Huron and Erie counties on the west. And I think we've just recently added Trumbull County. So we don't charge for our services. Um, much of our work is supported by the Small Business Administration but we also have a significant amount of contributions from businesses in the Cleveland area who want to see small businesses succeed. And we are certainly grateful for that. Uh, here's a, a quick look at our website. Um, if you notice, you can um, ask for a mentor. You can look at workshops coming up as well as recorded workshops. And there are probably a hundred recorded workshops on our website that might be useful to you. Um, the live upcoming webinars include not only ours, but some of the national webinars. So uh, in addition, there are a lot of resources, including templates uh, for a business plan, uh, financial plan, marketing plan, a lot of blogs and other kinds of information. So when you get a chance, take a look at our, our website. It's www.score dot org forward slash Cleveland. So I'm going to stop share uh, and I'm going to let the folks at the CPL take over and do their fantastic presentation. So I'm going to shut up. Can you all see? Yes, looks okay. good. Good. I want to make sure that I'm ready for the question. Great. Can you see my notes or just the full PowerPoint? Uh, I can see your notes. That's what I thought. Um, I don't know why it does this. Okay, there you go. Well, so let's just I'll do that. 
and <laughs> that's not what I planned on doing. This is oh. Let me do that and then there we go. Yeah, looks right. good. And then... All right, always a technology issue. <laughs> so welcome everyone and thanks for joining us. Um, a few things about us uh, that you might not have known, we're um, a very old and fairly large library. When they're all completed, we will have 27 branches. We're currently in a capital improvement project. So um, we have some opening and some closing, I know that Glenville will be closing soon and Brooklyn will be opening. So that's 27 with an asterisk. Our public administration library is in City Hall if you have not been in there. It actually is a depository for the City of Cleveland laws and regulations, including the really, really old ones on microfiche. And we are one of the top research institutions. Some say top three. I err on the side of caution and say top 10. Um, but you might not realize the kind of gem that you have here. There aren't a lot of public libraries that have the academic resources that we have here that you can still go in and check out books and just walk in as a regular member of the public. So that said, we have 150 databases with several online learning platforms um, that you normally have to pay for. And we are an official patent and trademark resource center. I'll get to that in just a moment. So why come into the library? Like I said, we are not your typical library. We are far more academic than we are neighborhood. Um, they do story time over in youth services, uh, but we don't. Uh, we were just talking earlier how Sandy and I would love to be paid to just sit and read, <laughs> but we're not. Um, we do research and we do research with uh, things that most people don't even realize. Um, I'm looking at some of my notes from a question we had a patron who called who was looking for a specific type of a sodium chemical and he wanted manufacturers and I can only find international. And so that's the kind of um, stuff that we answer. Yeah, we have some really basic things, but um, a lot of times we do some really in-depth research and everything that we do is free. Technically you've already paid for it with your taxes, but no cost to you whatsoever, including all the things that, you know, you get from us, the only thing you might have to pay for is if you use our Tech Central and 3D print something. You can come in in person. We are more than happy to set up an appointment. Um, we can do like a Zoom or Teams meeting if you can't come in. You'll just have to make sure that we um, definitely set up a calendar uh, space for that. And we have some conference rooms here and physical space that you can rent. In fact, tonight, the Ohio Democratic National, no, the Ohio Democratic Party, I believe, is reserving the auditorium and the um, indoor reading garden to have this huge like kickoff party for something. So um, if it's after hours, you there is a, ch a charge for food and beverage. But if you need to meet with someone and you need a conference room with a, a, a whiteboard or we even have um, smart boards, you can go online. All of that is here and you can use it. To get to all of this stuff, you'll need a library card, which again is free. You only have to live in Ohio. A lot of folks think you have to live in Cleveland and that's very not true. Just in Ohio or work in Ohio. You can live somewhere else but work here. You can go to school here, but live somewhere else. Own property here. One of those things, we just have to be connected to the state and you just go online where it says library cards, um, our website, tpl.org. 
it'll walk you through how to get one. You can get an e-card, which will get you access to all of our databases, the online books, those learning platforms I mentioned, but it won't let you check out books. So if you want to check something out, you'll have to actually come in and show your ID and prove you are who you are. If you have questions and you're online, you can click on this little ask us um, button and I promise you it will not be a computer because it's one of us. <laughs> we all take shifts so we do answer the live reference questions. And if we can't answer it because it, you know it might be something in another department, we'll make sure that it gets to the right person. So today, um, I'm just gonna mention a lot of the general resources that we have, and I want you to just be aware of them. And then later on, Sandy will take over and do some of the live searching on the databases that we typically use um, for our market research. This is one of my favorite go-tos for any type of forms. Gale Legal Forms is a, one of those databases that most I'd say a lot of businesses don't know that we have, but it is meant for businesses, not just law stuff. Um, one example of the many, many that we have here, you can see the small business startup package. And yeah, you'll find the typical things like um, the LLC operating agreement, NDAs, but you'll also see the um, check request form and job invoice form. So you'll find a lot of samples that you can get and everything comes in a downloadable Word document. As soon as you download it, it's yours. You don't have to log in, you don't have to have your card or anything. As soon as you save that to your computer, you can do with it whatever you want. Um, now they do have even more on here. So some of them do have PDFs, some of them have samples or examples that they've done. And when you click on each, you can click on either the title of it and it'll take you to the main page or you can click on where it says MS Word and it'll just download the file right there. If you'd like to see the examples, I would suggest click on the main page to see if there is an example that's already filled out. But these are all legal in Ohio. Um, if you are operating in another state, you might have to find another library in another state that has Gale, um, but we have the Ohio uh, version. Speaking of legal things, we are also, uh, we do a lot of IP research. And I realize that most small business owners don't have patents, even though that's really, you know, what we focus on when we say intellectual property. It's almost always, you know, patent, 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 but it's more than just that. We know that there are trademarks and uh, trade secrets, although we ask you, please don't tell us your trade secrets. Don't tell us your patent idea either. If there's, I know the idea of like, well, the librarian is great and they'll be, you know, good and they won't do anything and they won't tell anyone. I understand that, but you can't disclose your information. Um, and if you start to, I will be kind of mean and say, stop. I don't want to know. I'm not trying to, you know, be the bad guy, but I just don't want you to get in trouble for disclosing your information. Um, so what we do is we kind of expand on the legal series that SCORA has already put out, they've got the intellectual property and the nuts and bolts of patents. If you've not seen them, I really encourage you to go online. You can just register for them for free and then you'll have access to the YouTube videos. So even though we are searching for patents, we aren't necessarily searching for them for patent research, if that makes sense. We typically, or we often do small business research as well. So one of my favorite examples um, were, we had a couple who came in, they were absolutely adorable. Um, I think he was 91 or 92 and she was 89 or 90. And they were still running this business, doing everything, all of the, um, the paperwork and invoices. And it was not a small industry or a small business rather. So they owned a specialized heater and it looked like it was like a tunnel system. And it was, there were two benefits for it. One was to help revive people who had been basically frozen to death, who were climbing mountains in Canada. And the other one was to cure pain. <laughs> so those two have nothing to do with each other, but that same system had multiple uses, I suppose. And they told us, they said, oh, 
our son, you know, he doesn't really want to take over. He's getting into his 60s now. And I'm just like, okay, most people who leave businesses to their children are not in their 60s or the business owners were in their 60s leaving it to the children. But they held on for obviously many years later. And they really wanted to find a local company to use their, who will use their stuff and who will kind of do them right. So what I ended up doing was I found out that they had government contracts and patents. And as soon as you give me numbers, I can find something. So I was able to find their patents and they use a classification system to say, you know, what industry it falls under. I found an industry. I was able to find ones just in Cleveland and then I found, you know, PPG, Sherman Williams, um, some of the hospitals, oddly enough, there were all people who are companies that could have bought their products or their business. Um, and then I kind of handed it over to our business librarian to do more research on each of those companies to find out which one would be probably the best for them and to give them, you know, a, a packet of here's what we can offer you and here's what we found. And they were so happy, but it was IP research, but not in the sense of I'm looking at a patent. And this is one of the reasons why you might want to come in. Um, this is what the patent public search looks like and the trademark search, which just was changed. If you've been on there um, previously and you are familiar with tests, Tess is gone, and I'm very sad because the new one is just a single bar. And if you put it on expert mode, um, you just get a couple more options. It, it doesn't do, you can't do Boolean searching. You can't do any of the um, structured search like you could before. Everything is going to Google. Um, but we can still find things. The patents on the other end has actually been far more enhanced. Um, it used to be that you'd have to go to DC to do patent searching, or you can come into one of the PTRCs. And we had a three password system. And one of the passwords was a FOB and it had a number that changed every 60 seconds. So it was very secure for public information. And I don't know why. Um, but now it's online. And unless you knew how to use those systems before Pub East and Pub West, you won't know how to use this. It's not intuitive. It is not easy to find just the help documents that you need. I know it says help on there, but unless you know what it is you're looking for, you, you probably won't understand it. And when you come in and you talk to us, we have been trained. I think, well, one of our librarians was a fellow at the patent office. I've gone there no, two or three times. Um, and when I say training, I mean a whole week of nonstop all day, working lunches, business dinners, training, where we listen to people talk, we do exercises, we just do searching for a solid week. And I jokingly call it the brain melting session because by the time you're done, you're just like overwhelmed, but it's really, really intense. And we have learned a lot so much so that we end up teaching this for um, law students. So in about a month, I'm going to be over at Case Western Law School teaching them, their um, intellectual property students, how to do advanced patent, patent searching. So if you come in, we can definitely help you. Um, if you are looking for a patent and you have something that you want to um, register, we can help you with that. Uh, the other benefit is if you come to us first, we can show you how to search. And then if you find that it's something that's viable, then you can go to an attorney. But if you don't, if you find out that you can't patent whatever it is, or your trademark is already taken, or, you know, it's just not quite what you wanted it to be, you wouldn't have spent the money on an attorney telling you that you would have just done it yourself. So we always encourage everyone to go speak to a professional. But if you can do just a little bit on your own beforehand, um, that will definitely save you some time and money. And these, I'm just going to mention, um, if we have time in the end, uh, we'll go over them, but these are also on our, um, the first two are on our databases. That last one obviously is a learning platform, but Gale eBooks Business, uh, that's the name of the database. On there are the business plan handbooks and 
They go up to, I can't remember what volume, but we have them also in print here at the library if you'd like to look at them. And they have business plans for very specific industries, um, things that I probably wouldn't have thought of. I actually found a business plan for a hot dog cart. <laughs> so they, and they're very comprehensive. They go over market research, they go over financial data. So the real business plans that have been put together in this book and are available to you for free, you can download them. Um, there are PDFs, but if you're looking for something as an example or just where to start, um, this is a great place. The other one is the Small Business Reference Center. And there's a tile on there. They changed the, uh, the layout, but there's one of the tiles that you can click on. It says NOLO Legal Books. Those are... This, these are the ebooks. We have a lot of them in print. But Nolo is a publisher that has a lot of great books about law for everyday people. So if you need to form an LLC, if you need to um, figure out, you know, general real estate purchases, or they even have ones for like marriage, divorce, landlord, tenant. Um, but there's a lot of them that are small business specific on that database and there are more there than we have in print so if you're looking for something that's a you know an ebook and you just a topic that you weren't quite sure about you can go on there and find it and lastly i like to plug in linkedin because it it seems like a catch-all and i talk about it a lot but it's really great for very specific things so if you are you know inheriting something or you you need to learn how to do QuickBooks and you're just like, I have no idea how to use this. This is what I was given or, you know, so-and-so told me that this is the best and I don't know what it is. You can go on there. You just need your library card number and everything that you do there because it's an account for you is saved. So whatever you're working on, it will save. If there's a course that you're taking to say it's like a four video course, it will save all of that for you. And it, Obviously not just software, um, there's career specifics. So if you wanna be a data analyst, you can go on there and find out the data analyst web, um, the courses and workshops, and then leadership and management. And um, some of those things include things like how to pitch an idea, um, how to give a presentation, and the things that are soft skills that you we really just don't learn even on the job, depending on what our job is, that um, you'll be able to uh, learn from there. So next, we're going to talk about industry research. And I always start with um, how I mentioned those numbers earlier in the patents, NAICS codes. Um, it's N-A-I-C-S, but we pronounce it NAICS. And they are the, the system that the U.S. created to find, um, to classify industries. It's from the Census Bureau. If you go on the census.gov, you, there's a little, you know, you can find NAICS in the corner, or if you can go to census.gov slash NAICS, it'll take you to the same place. Um, but if, because the government uses it, now everyone uses it. So you'll find NAICS search bars um, in most of our databases, as Sandy will show you. And this is what it looks like on the census website, um, the North American Industry Classification System, hence the NAICS. And the current is the 2022. It, I want to say just came out, but I guess it's not just anymore. Um, and when I say who uses it, almost everyone uses it in business and uh, business research. So NAICS is your industry. If you are a restaurant owner, then you can find the, the code for restaurants. If you are a dog groomer, you can find the code for dog grooming. If you are a wholesale manufacturing supply supplier, um, you can find that as well. So when you find the code for your industry, um, then you'll be able to search further. And one code doesn't fit everyone. So depending on what you're doing, so say you are manufacturing, but you're manufacturing, you know, construction equipment, um, there might not be one that specific. So you have to come up with a few. And then when you do go on there, this is what you'll see. So I just did a general search for restaurants and then you can see also how individual it gets. So if you are doing a specialty snack, 
like you're an ice cream stand, that's a different code. Um, if you're doing, if you're selling alcohol, that's another code. If you are doing um, like catering, that's also different. So each of those numbers, it builds on. So 72 is like services and uh, please don't quote me on that one. <laughs> services and food. And then it builds out to restaurants and types of restaurants. So here built out 722511 are full service restaurants. So what can you find with our databases? Once you have that NAICS code that talks about the industry that you're going to be in, you can plug that into our databases to find more. Um, and Sandy will go over some of them. You can find demographic data. So who is in the neighborhood that you are selling or buying or whatever it is, um, what they're doing. So consumer and household spending, is it worth opening up a high end, you know, uh, clothing store in a neighborhood that the average household income is $30,000? Probably not. Um, do you want to find a place where they are spending, I don't know, at least 50% or more on the stuff that, you know, it's just a grocery. So say if you are in the food industry and you we're looking for a neighborhood where a lot of people go eat out and buy a lot of food, you can find all of that. Um, also competitor data, who else is in that industry? And then suppliers. Um, I mentioned the person who was looking for the chemicals. Uh, it doesn't have to be that complicated, honestly. Um, it can be simple as simple as I'm looking for um, people who supply t-shirts for silk screening, or I'm looking for people who supply, um, you know, flour or any other restaurant supplies for, you know, my bakery. So Sandy will go over that and I will, here we go. I'm going to stop sharing. And... Okay, and I guess I will start sharing. <laughs> um, screen. Sure, I will. Uh, while we're waiting, uh, could you answer one question? Um, you can only use LinkedIn learning resources at the library. Is that true? You're muted. Sorry. Once you have your library card, um, you don't have to be at the library. You can use it anywhere. Um, in fact, most of our databases you can use anywhere. You'll just have to log in. And like I have one that's connected to my personal library card um, because I still do like management and leadership courses on there and I could do them at home. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right, I'm trying to get this thing going here. Oh, I need an edge tab. Okay, here we go. All right, so um, the first thing that you're going to need to do when you want to use the library's databases is go to our website. And um, for this, you're going to need this research tab and then click on research databases. And then we have them arranged by category. Um, so mostly we're gonna be using the business and consumer information category here, but you also may wanna be aware of uh, newspaper articles. So you could look for articles from the New York Times as well as the Plain Dealer. Uh, um, so a lot of other things to explore here that, that may be helpful in your project. We have, um, so this is an alphabetical list of all the business and consumer information databases that, that we provide. And the first one that we're going to go, oh, I should also say, it depends on um, whether you can get into them or not, um, depends on which library is subscribing to it. So for the, Databases that say CPL card holders, that means that you have to have one of our library cards to be able to get into this from offsite. 
Um, a lot of the databases on here, though, uh, don't say anything specifically. So that means that if you have any CleaveNet card, you can get in from offsite. If you come to any of our database or come to any of our locations, then you can um, certainly get into any of them while you're here. All right, so we're first gonna go into Business Insights. And uh, we can just start right up in the search bar up here. And you can, in this case, uh, since we already know what the NAICS code is, you could type that in or we can just go straight to the word restaurants. Hit enter. So it starts us out in a, um, yeah, on a page that, this is really arranged for browsing. So if you like to browse, this is the kind of screen set up for you. It's not my favorite. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna to wanna to go into the industries page here. So again, we have um, there are actually a number of different categories for restaurants under the NAICS codes, but we're following the full service restaurants. So we're going to go into that. And there's a little in industry overview. Um, you can see top companies by revenue. You can switch it to the United States. So you'll see companies that you're more familiar with. Um, and you'll notice that the top ones have revenue figures, but some of these other ones do not. And they are, that's because they're privately owned companies. And that means that they do not have to, um, you know, provide that information to anyone other than the government when they're doing their taxes. Um, but the, the inter interesting thing on this page is these industry reports off on the left um, you've got, I'll actually go to the bottom one first here. This U.S. industry report is the most general one that they have. And so you get some industry information here, the background and development, current conditions. You'll, you'll see that they've really only gotten to about 2020 on here. Uh, we were talking about this earlier. They must not have figured out how to how that they're going to write up how things have gone since then. Since things um, things in the restaurant industry are still pretty up in the air in a lot of cases. Um, and then what can be the most useful part of this is um, sources listed in the bottom. Now some of these are older as well, but you'll see things like this 2020 state of the restaurant industry and it gives the source for that. And if you go to restaurant.org and look under their research reports, you'll see that they have updated. So they've got a 2023, which you might have access to. So all these things can help. Lots of times when you're trying to pull this kind of information together, there's a lot of um, piecing together bits you know, from here and there. Um, so a little bit higher up here, we also have emerging industry reports. So this this is one way that they're that they have updated the um, the main report. And like here's a report on dark kitchens, and of course that happened mostly during the pandemic. So if you're interested in starting a a restaurant, but you don't want to have a physical location for people to come into, um, you might get some good information from this spot. Okay. And then the other kind of industry reports are from this publisher called Plunkett. And um, just click on that one. You know, they Okay. So there's a uh, what is going on here. <laughs> This is not the one that, here we go, just took a moment to load. So we have, um, you know, big table of contents and this is still loading, I guess. That's actually not the one that I wanted. Let me go into a different spot here. Here we go. This is the one with the code that we've been using. Okay. 
Okay, so this one has 74 pages and it goes into a lot more detail than, um, than the other industry reports. So you'll get a lot more financials. Let me just try to scroll down here real fast. Um, and bar charts and graphs and, uh, you know, so depending on the figures that you need or the, you know, the way that you like to see information arranged, um, this re these reports can be really helpful for you as well. Okay. And then uh, we're back on this main industry report page here. Um, further down, you'll see there, there's a section for industry articles. This can be very helpful for you when you're, particularly when you're starting a business and they discovered that there really is no NAICS code that's specific to your business, but someone else has probably started something similar or, you know, so you may again, be able to piece things together from reading articles. And so you have access to those through links down here. Um, obviously there's a lot more going on in this database um, than we have time to go into today. Uh, one thing I did want to point out though, is that this database um, indexes the Cranes Cleveland business articles. Um, so, it, so it doesn't take you right to their website but you can get the full text of their articles. I think there's, there's either a one or two week delay in the, when the articles actually show up here. All right, so I'm gonna go on to another database. Now this one's called Data Axle, and it's one that we, you know, you get to it the, the same way that we started the other one, go to the cpl.org and under the research databases. Okay, and they have their information split up in a variety of, of like, almost like sub databases. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is U.S. businesses. And sometimes it can be helpful if you're trying to find, uh, figure out which category is, is or NAICS code will yeah, be good for you. Um, if you know another business that's that's already out there, um, you can kind of cheat and go straight to their listing and see what they've, what they're using. I'm just going to use an example of Mabel's barbecue. Can you refresh the page? Maybe I'm still seeing Gail. I don't know if anyone else is. Yes. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I don't know if you have to stop sharing and reshare. Oh, Well, I got rid of that one. Let me try again here. Technology is not our friend today. No, it is not. I blame the weather. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's not behaving the same way it has in the past. All right, so I'll go back to the main okay. screen here so you can see all of the different databases. Um, the U.S. businesses is the one we're going into. And I'm going to use Mabel's barbecue as a quick uh, example here, view results. And in case you weren't in the know, there's also a Mabel's barbecue in Vegas. But we're going to click on the main location on East 4th. So I can give you an idea of what kind of information you might find in here. Um, some basic, where they're located, phone number. Here you can see their um, industry codes. So, and as this mentions, these are, the, these are considered the primary codes. So some companies that do um, a number of different things may have a number of different uh, codes that they use here to describe all the different lines of business that they're in. You get number of employees, uh, the fact that this is a privately owned business. And so again, they don't have to report all of their sales or other financial information. So um, this database does try to 
contact every um, every company that's listed within it at least once a year. Um, so those companies can either choose to give them information or not. Um, in any case, uh, the database uses algorithms so that they can fill in the, uh, the blanks. So based on the fact that this is a restaurant in the Cleveland market and they've got you know this amount of square footage, um, you know where exactly they're located, their sales volume is likely to be 358,000. I have no idea if that's really accurate or not, but um, but at least it gives you an idea. Um, in this case, we also get uh, the manager's name in here, which can be kind of hard to find sometimes. Um, another spot that might be useful for you is under business expenditures. Again, like it says, these are estimated annual expenses, but if you're just starting out and you really have no idea how much you you're, might need to spend on, on some of these uh, basic things for your business, this can give you an idea. And then there's a little bit of historical data by sales volume and number of employees down here, which it was all zero up until 2016 because that's when they started. Okay. And now I'm going to go do a new search and we'll go to the advanced tab. This is where you can come up with a, a list of, of restaurants that are already out there or, you know, whatever your industry is. And so you can come up with a list of competitors. Um, so we'll say we're going to do keyword and I want to do Again, I'm just going to type in restaurants, but if I change this to search all NAICS, you could type in the, the number. And I'm going to click on search here, and it gives me all, all of the options. So whichever one you want to select, you click on it, and it puts it down in the selected box. It's a little bit hard to see here, but... This database is interesting too because you have to scroll down a ways, but it gives you a list of related matches. So you can even limit it down to what type of restaurant, um, a steakhouse, German restaurant, a Jamaican. Um, and even further down, you've got some, some brand names. Um, I can think of easier ways to look for those locations, but um, so we're just going to go with general restaurants there, even though that code is not, that's a, it's a different kind of coding system. But I also want to limit it to Cleveland, Ohio. So I'm going to go over here under geography and click on city and state. And so that gave me search boxes back over here. So type in Cleveland and say go. And this is where I get to see just how many Clevelands there are out there in other states. Uh, again, I clicked on the result and it put it in the selected box. And I can come over here on the right and click on update count. And that just gives you, if you're just looking to see how many restaurants there are in Cleveland, there's your answer right there. But if you'd like to see the list, you can view results. And this is just going to be an alphabetical list. Um, there are 53 pages, um, 1,325 restaurants with, you know, using the same code. Um, again, you get the same kind of information that you did for Mabel's Barbecue if you click on, on any of these. Uh, if you'd like to get a sense of where all they're located visually, you can click on heat map. This is kind of cool. Um, and you can uh, generate the heat map for by location or sales volume or number of employees, but I think location is probably the most useful in this case. And then you just keep on zooming in to see where, where are all of these restaurants. Probably this is going to be most helpful for you if you're not all that familiar with this area. 
you get down far enough, then you get the get the bubbles for the actual locations. And somehow I made them disappear. <laughs> So depending on your search, that can be useful. Um, if you, you can also print any of these or you can download them. Um, if you want to print or download, this database has you select which records you want. So you can um, select a whole page and like it said, 25 selected, just keep going to the next page, select some more on and on, or you can select individual ones and then click on download. And it's easiest just to leave it at that selection and then download records. Anyway, it basically puts it into a, an Excel file, which is gonna take a moment to pull up here. So you can get tabs for absolutely all, all of the, the different um, spaces it had in that database, or you could tell it to do, just do some of the more basic ones. But anyway, you've got a list and you can um, mis, you know, massage it however you need to, to make it you know, more useful for your searching. Uh, let's see. So I guess I... All right, so I'm gonna go on to another aspect of data axle. And that one is, um, so you've, you've identified your competitors uh, or, or at least where they are to help you figure out where you might want to physically place your restaurant. Then you need to find, or another part of that is finding the people. And so you can go down here under US consumers and lifestyles um, we're going to go straight to advanced search. Um, again, we can go under geography. So I want to choose Cleveland again. Okay, that's then the selected. And they keep adding interesting things here. Here's a whole section for automobiles now. So basically, you know, it's kind of fun to look up, look yourself up on here to see what car they have. They're usually a, a car or two behind, so I'm not sure where they're getting that information, but maybe that will be uh, more useful in future. Um, but I want to show you the, the lifestyles options here. Um, so we're just going to look up pets. So... So however they get their information from, uh, from you know, buying various lists of, of people who buy like Dog Fancy Magazine or, you know, some other way, they've identified uh, people in the Cleveland area who uh, are interested in dogs. And I did an update count there and can see that, well, some of these have emails listed in there, but... More importantly, there are almost uh, 14,000 people who are apparently interested in dogs. Um, another aspect of this, uh, the consumer database, is that you can get a listing for, for each person who lives in a household. Well, you can make the list a little bit more specific by saying just one person per household. And I'll update the count there, and you can see that brings it down to a little bit more manageable number. And again, we can view the list then. And you can do a heat. The heat map is really interesting here for dogs, because if, if you look at all those, I mean, there are a lot of them on the east side too, but definitely on the west side. So you can zoom in even further and you see a lot of these people are in Tremont and Ohio City. And so, um, so in case you're thinking of starting another, um, you know, a restaurant where you could have a pet patio or something, oh, you're probably gonna wanna target one of these areas where 
there are a lot of dog owners or you know people who are interested in dogs. So that's another way that you can use that kind of feature. Let's see. So I think that was it for for this database. Yes, I will close that one and see if I can do this correctly this time. And here we go. Okay, now that I'm on my last one, I've got it figured out. Um, so this other database, again, get to it for the same way as the others. Uh, this one's called Mergent Intellect, and it has very similar information uh, as does Data Axle. Um, you can look up businesses as well as individuals. And you have to scroll down a bit to, we'll just start out with the consumer data here. I had that open too long, apparently. Okay. So, and we'll go into advanced search. If, if for any reason you need to look up somebody's phone number, that still has a, a listed landline, you can use either Data Axle or this one. Um, just pop their name in here. Mostly people are not listed so much anymore though. So we'll go into advanced search so you can see what how different this database presents the information and the, and the searching. Um, so we'll go by state. Click on Ohio, and then you have to say add to criteria. And again, we want to limit it to Cleveland. So we type that in. And select and add to criteria. And down here to lifestyle. Here, now they've got their pet lover uh, information arranged a little bit differently. So I'm just going to say dog owner here. Obviously, there are a lot of other choices. Uh, but then we add to criteria again. And our results of how many were found are down here at the bottom. And there are just a lot more listed here than are in Data Axle. I'm not exactly sure which one is more accurate, but um, it goes to show that there's no one perfect source to do any of this searching. And it's a lot of comparing and um, using, you know, doing your own analysis. Um, so you can search in a variety of ways here. There, you know, you can see different age groups over here. Um, so apparently people who are over 60 are the, the biggest, um, you know, own the most dogs in the area. So, and you can also print or download from this database as well. So basically it just arranges information differently than Data Axle, plus they have their own algorithms. So um, I tried to figure out what the, the difference was in the, in the results being so different, um, but it wasn't clear to me. So we'll go, oops, and we'll, I'm gonna go into another business search to show you that angle, how that's different from data axle as well. We'll go, here's Mabel's. Oh, and this always throws me off a little bit. The address is actually listed up here, but um, I think that 900 Literary Road is probably where Lola or Lolita's used to be not actually Mabel's barbecue. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on with that, but that's again, another reason that you want to, to uh, check multiple sources to, you know, nail down some, some details. Um, but it's overall basically the same kind of information that you get from data axle. They just like to use more charts on this one. 
So, but if we go into advanced search, again, this is where you can um, create a list. So we'll go under location again. Select Ohio, add to criteria. I just have to remind myself to do that. You have to go back up to the top here, to the city. Add to criteria. And industry, the most important part here. Yeah, I, I'm not as crazy about this database because uh, it's harder to actually start your, your search. They want you to, if you like to browse through things, it's really great. If you're, um, if you'd rather just search, it's more complicated than it needs to be, I think. Oh, I did not actually say restaurants, did I? Let me go back here. Okay. Oh, so that's interesting. That only brought up restaurants and other eating places. So I think in this case, I really do want to use that NAICS code, which is seven something, seven, two, two, five, one, one. There we go, full service restaurants. So again, depending on the database, some things are easier than others. Um, so add that to the criteria. So you can see the criteria down here, make sure that you've gotten everything and search. So now you get a, a list of restaurants in Cleveland. And they've come up with, yeah, I, I think the number is similar here to the, the data axle one. So again, you can um, do things with, um, with the chart, change that for employee type, well, location, they're pretty much all gonna be the same here. And the industry should all be the same. Um, again, you can print or download. You can you know, get your results right into an Excel spreadsheet and do what you need to do with the, um, you know, with the results there. So I think that was all I wanted to cover with those or feel like we have time to cover. And I'm done, <laughs> done sharing. <laughs> um, yeah, so if we still have time, did you want to go over any of the other? Well, it is one o'clock, so. Okay. I've taken up most of our time. I uh, did see a question um, about patents and trademark search. Uh -huh. So you can email us. Um, Actually, I thought I had a screen. I do have a thank you screen. I'm going to share that one really quick. Oh, Sandy, you have to stop sharing your screen. Oh. Did it actually stop? No. Oh, there we go. Okay. So okay. let me share. I'm not going to go into the full presentation and deal with technology again, but this is our contact information. Um, the patent and trademark research is through the science department, which is just as easy. 
Um, it's SciTech at CPL.org. In fact, since I'm in editing mode, I can do that. And their number, oh wait, that's my phone number. <laughs> I forgot to put that on there. Um, and we're still on the, the first screen of, or the industry research screen. Oh, it's because I'm on the wall. There we go. Ah. Now you can see what I'm doing. Um, 63. That's business. And then. So you can email me, you can email um, the business department, the science department, um, and my email is first name, last name. Put that also one here. We have one more question too. Um, Stuart's asking, what sources are most common for you to take patrons through when a small business comes to you? The ones Maybe. that we just covered. <laughs> I mean, it, it definitely depends on what their question is. Sometimes people come in and they want to do everything all at once. And so we cover as much as we can. Um, other times they're interested in a specific aspect of, you know, of, of the whole project. And so we focus on that. Um, so the ones that we showed you today, uh, we use very frequently when people are trying to identify competitors or help figure out what's the best location for their, if it's a service uh, business, um, you know, that kind of thing. But it's also a lot easier for us to help when uh, we have one individual that we're talking to, because today we have to sort of guess at what everybody is interested in and, and make it pretty general. Um, but if you come in or, or call us, we can help, um, you know, with your specific needs. Fantastic. So as I mentioned, uh, we're live streaming on our YouTube channel and everybody who has attended will get a link to that recording uh, probably tomorrow. Um, and so you can rewatch it as many times as you want. It will be on our website also within the next week. So I can only thank you both for doing this again, it's such a wonderful resource for our clients. And uh, the more they understand what kind of information they can get, the better research they can do before getting their business started and probably avoid a lot of pitfalls. So all for free. You, <laughs> we like that yeah. word, free. <laughs> They're free. I do, I, I do want to mention um, if anybody is interested in nonviolent communication, which is a big topic these days. We have a client by the name of Morris Irvin, who is an expert in that area and is doing a book launch with the Cleveland Public Library on February 1st. So look for information about that and uh, enjoy the rest of your